So you have to believe and obey because faith is evident, made evident, because you act, you step into it, you do that thing. Maybe the first thing is that God tells you to start praying for them. So you start praying for them. Maybe he says, go meet some of them, and you go meet some of them. Maybe he says, do this or do that, bake a cake or whatever. And it could be more complicated than that. Organize this and rent that facility, whatever. But there's always compassion, direction, obedience. Hi, and welcome to Stone Point Community Church, where your life is made better. Thank you for listening to our podcast, and thanks for supporting the ministry. If you enjoyed today's message, why don't you be a blessing and share it with a friend? We appreciate you and pray for God's very best in your life. Which, by the way, that is the first requirement for a God miracle. Is you have to have compassion. It's what starts and gets you in touch with the heart of God. You have to have compassion on them. Now, so he immediately starts healing the sick. And so the, the faith then that Jesus is going to dis, stir up, it comes from a place of loving these people. He saw them. They looked scattered and beaten and abused. And so he just starts ministering to them and healing them. And this goes on and on until evening approach, verse 15. And here's what I love. This is the, the, the first administrative response from his disciples, who apparently had not loved the people as much as Jesus did. That's sometimes a problem, isn't it? He loves people more than we do sometimes. And so he says, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Uh, You know, the restaurants will close. And send the crowds away. Just say that with me. Send the crowds away. Bad response. Not that you responded badly. but So they can go in the village and buy themselves some food. Now, even that would be iffy, all that many people hitting the villages. What, what we learned from here is that they saw the problem, or what Jesus considered an opportunity, with human reasoning. Based on their resources. So they made a quick decision. Can't do that. Now, I just want to pause here because I'm guilty of more than once missing out what God could have done because I just immediately said it can't be done. It's very simple to give to God through Stone Point. The first one, you can scan the QR code. The second one, you can visit us at scc.church, click the donate icon, fill out the required details, and bam, you're done. I can't do that. We can't do that. No way. Our church can't go there, can't do that. Look at us. And, I mean, thankfully Jesus already had a plan. And so he he comes back, and now they they explain why they're saying this, and they actually say what resources they have. He says, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Probably their lunch, their dinner. They'd probably brought it on the boat so when they landed they could eat. They hadn't gotten to eat all day, so they still had the two fish and the loaves. I'm just conjecturing that, but there they have it. And so we only have this. The only haves. We only have. (laughs) Oh, we only have. We only have. Every time you say that, that means you are obviously looking at your own strength, your own resources, your own ability. I only have. I only have. Now, it's not bad to admit to the Lord what, you, what you're aware of having. I'm not saying it's never wrong. To, it's always wrong to say, oh, I don't only have this. If you do it in preparation for what he's going to do. You see what I'm saying? Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this because I only have that. That's safer than, no, we can't do that because I only have this. And it goes away. It passes I have a theory, this is just a Castile theory I call them, and that uh, many, we all get opportunities that God taps on our shoulders. And you always wonder, how many of those did I ignore? Because I said, we can't do that. I can't do that. Well, 
Now we move into how the miracle begins to happen. So this is, we're gonna, this is kind of the anatomy of a miracle. Uh, Jesus says to them, bring, bring them here to me. He's talking about the five loaves and the fish. Bring those here. The first move to a step is after you said, I only have, then give it to Jesus. Give it to him. Lord, this is what I have to invest in that vision of yours. This is the only talent I have to do what you've asked me to do. This is the only skill I have. I'm aware that I don't have the skill or the ability or the inclination even. You know, sometimes I need to bring my attitude to the Lord. Lord, I don't have the attitude to do that. I don't like those people that much. Come on, people. I forgot I'm like in the saint church. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was out of order. Okay. So he's, he says, no, I want you to be, to just, okay, why don't you just give me what you have? Let's start there. And so he starts the miracle. And, and I want to note that Jesus starts the miracle. I just want to go back to that. <clears throat> it's so important that we understand what I do compared to what God does. And we don't get those turned around. So, <clears throat> so here's, here's happy. You know the story probably. Uh, so he told the people to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. It's very simple to give online. There are only five steps to follow. Step one, go to our website, www.stonepointcc.org or for short, scc.church. Step two, then click on PayPal or donate icon located at the top of the page. Step three, you are asked for whatever amount you desire to give. After you have done so, click the donate option down below. Step four, on this page, you have to notate what you are giving for where it says add a note, whether it is tithe, offering, building fund, love offering, guest offering, and so on. Step five, fill out the required details, then scroll down to the bottom of the page and click donate now, and you're done. And he hands them to the disciples. And here's what I, I find. This is, to me, is the miracle. I personally don't think that Jesus stood there breaking 5,000 pieces. I think he took the five loaves. I was trying to do the math. I'm terrible at math. But, you know, five among 12. He had to divide five loaves among 12 guys. So that's a little less than a half a guy. So now they have like a half or less than a half of loaf. But wait till the fish gets here. Jesus takes two fish and breaks it into 12 pieces. Okay, are you visualizing that? They don't have a basket of bread. They have a little tiny piece of fish. Now, they could have been really big fish, but that's still not very much. And so they've got their half a loaf and their little fish, and they, they're supposed to now go feed the people. I want you to notice that. It's blessed. God has started it, but he hands it to you. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, you know, he, he, I love how he says that. Uh, you know, Jesus, the disciples wanted to send them away. And Jesus says, no, you're not going to send them away. You, you need to give them something to eat. You need to feed them. And he gave it to their disciples and the disciples gave it to the people. So this is my vision of how this looked. Okay, I'm one of the disciples. Jesus has just done his prayer. Uh, I'm trying to believe with him, but I'm really nervous. That I would probably be. You wouldn't be, but I would be. And then I'm, I'm ready for what? Poof. Don't you think that's how you should have done it? Just poof. I mean, there is bread everywhere. Bread is coming down, fish are coming down, maybe some coleslaw, tartar, so whatever. It's just like raining food. That's what I would have expected. Oh no, he takes two fish, gives me a twelfth of those, hands me this little piece of fish, 
and this half a loaf. Now go feed him. What? <laughs> now, <clears throat> so they, they have to because they're looking, people are looking, and Jesus has prayed, and now we got to. So off they go, and they start with the first group, and they break a bread. And I think what they did very quickly, you take that. Because they were in groups of people. Another place that he had them sit down in groups of 50. And they were in little clusters and families. And so they come to the Martinez family, and there's like 100 people there. I'm picking on the Latinos for some reason. I'm sorry. Okay. And so, but I want you to follow how this works. He gives them the bread. And the miracle continues. It's a chain reaction miracle. So it says, though, not as though, Jesus has signaled to them and to us, if you will let me start the miracle, it will flow through all of you. That's, that's, wow. So, so the miracle happened when the fish and the bread were shared. He broke the bread. Gave it to them. Now, now, I think Jesus at that time is done serving bread and fish. He's sitting back, maybe munching on a couple of pieces he kept. I don't know. But we do know that he gave them the bread and said, now go give it to the people. And I believe everybody saw a miracle. You know, the mama that brought the bread for her group, she's passing it out. And they're passing pass that down to them. And they're passing. This stuff will not stop. Every time they turn, there's more. And they... <laughs> okay, now catch this. <clears throat>I've been attending Stone Point Community Church for 11 years now and I absolutely love it. It's my church home. I have a three-year-old daughter named Mayana and it's extremely important for me to set the right example for her when it comes to honoring God with my finances. God has been so good to me with my business that tithing has given me a steady flow of income. I'm a hairstylist and I'm fully convinced that because I've been faithful with my tithing that my clients book appointments and come in like clockwork. Before they weren't seeing me as often, now they see me on a consistent basis even after doubling my price for my haircuts. My name is Ator Benjamin and this is my tithing testimony. Matthew 14, 20 ends it by saying this, they all ate and were satisfied. Now, it's interesting that they put that in there. You know how hard it is to feed a bunch of people and that they're all satisfied? Getting five stars? What's that? <laughs> now, it could have helped that they knew they were out in the woods, out in the wilderness, and uh, thank God for any kind of food. But this is not historically true of the Israelites. These people could complain at any time. <laughs> and for them to say they were like, they had enough, and satisfecho says it in Spanish. That's how you say in Spanish, you're full. You don't say I'm full, you say estoy satisfied. And, and, and they're saying that. And it says, and I, I love that because when God works, it's good. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take up your yoke, he calls resting. Possibly we need to be on guard for overworking an act of God. <laughs> I remember I was on my way to a, a retreat, and uh, it was going you know, we we're gonna expecting the Holy Spirit to move, and God was gonna deliver people and set people free. And I'm driving in the car, and and I'm kind of upset because I'm not ready. I'm not as spiritual as I hoped to be. I hadn't prayed as much as I thought I should, and I'm apologizing to God in the car. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Richard, I don't need you. No, it was, excuse me, Richard, but nothing that's going to happen at this retreat of any good is going to be you. 
You're not going to deliver anybody. You're not going to save anybody. You're going to heal anybody. You're not going to bring revelation to anybody. You, if I let you, you're going to talk maybe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love it. You know, and he said, I'll, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And that, that's what he actually said. I'm going to be there. I understood all the rest. I had just been lovingly put in my place. I had forgotten the miracle equation. I just do the little thing he asked me to do. And he does the big thing that needs to be done. You share Jesus, the Holy Spirit brings them in. You pray for the sick, you don't heal them, the Holy Spirit does. Right? You, you reach out to someone in need. Your actions are, are important. Yes, you're loving, you're caring, but the transformation will only come by the Holy Spirit. Keeping our miracle to, to our action ratio correct. We do very little. He does so much. Come on. You're in this room because God did a big thing in you. Nobody thought you could get saved. Come on, there's some of you in this room. I just have this sense. There's some of you that... <laughs> the last person I'll ever see in church. Do I get a witness? Okay, well, I don't know where I was going with that, but it was a miracle. It was a miracle. And Grandma, all she did was pray, 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 pray. Because that's what the Holy Spirit told her to do. You pray for Junior until he gets right with me. But Lord, do this. Why don't you do, no, no, Grandma, you pray. That's the act of faith. See, the act of faith. Uh, it's, it, where am I here? I'm getting so excited. I'm forgetting where I'm at. <clears throat> See, look, look at some scriptures, how God loves to use the things that don't seem like they could do it. 1 Corinthians 1.25, the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So no matter how strong you are, there's, you're no comparison for God. And no matter how smart you think you are, you are dumb compared to God. You don't, you know what I'm saying is, so, is so, that's the danger when I look at myself, like I think I'm so smart, and he goes, you don't know nothing. Trust me. During this break, you can pull out your phone to leave a review on our Facebook page. Let us know about your experience here at Stone Point. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to leave one for us on Google as well. We're really looking forward to hear what you have to say about Stone Point. Zechariah 4.6 says, this, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was building the te temple, rebuilding the walls, and the local guys had threatened him with his life. You're not going to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. And this is where this great verse comes, a great Pentecostal verse we love. Why, it's not by might nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain, notice the mountain again. This mountain, what are you, almighty mountain, before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. See, that's, could, I don't know, was, was Jesus kind of referencing this verse, when he said, if you had just a puppy seed of faith, you could speak to this mountain and be gone. But he understood, you weren't going to move that mountain. God was going to move through your faith and move the mountain. So, we need to live with an expectancy that faith brings. There's faith in this room, you can tell it. It's been so much fun just being here. You can feel the heart after Jesus and the heart to serve the Lord. And I commend you for that. Your pastors are great pastors and leaders. Uh, and so I say keep living with that expectancy that faith brings. But I sense as I was preparing this that there's just a word of encouragement you, to you as a congregation to not only think individual miracle, but think ministry miracle. And so there are some things that have been laid out for this church. I don't know what they are. No one's talked to me about it. But I think it requires faith. It requires for you to believe, not just the leader or the pastor, but everyone to say, I'm in. I'm going to believe God. And I'll give my loaves and fish to it. 
<laughs> I'll do what I need to do. I'll give what I have, but you're going to multiply it. One writer put it this way, The greatest faith is that which steps out in obedience to do what the Lord of the harvest has challenged them to do. I also feel that there's some individuals here today that God is putting a ministry vision in you. It's just starting to rise up, or maybe it's been a while, and it could be as, as quote, simple as go talk to your old people you used to know. It could be a, a bigger than that. It could be massive. I don't know. It's not about how big or small it is. It's the fact that God is stirring your heart and asking you, challenging you, just like Jesus did the disciples, you feed them. You feed them. I love that. You feed them. So the greatest faith is the faith which steps out in obedience. My dad was a man of faith. He's a little, little guy full of faith. He would have loved the service today. Oh, my gosh. I lean over to Beckett and my dad would have been dancing all across the front there. Uh, you know, the most I can get is, it's not very good. But, uh, it, but my dad, he, he was a ho- jumper, runner, hopper, top, shouter. You name it, my dad would do it. And he loved the Lord. But he's also a man of faith. But he, he was the one that kind of taught me this principle. He said, Richard, <clears throat> you don't have to do a lot. You just have to know that you have a big God. Just know that God is a big God. And he can do whatever he said he wants to do through you. But you have to believe it enough to step out. You have to believe it enough to step out. So let's ask God to give us a renewed love for people around you. So let's talk a little bit about the progression into ministry. Into how, Ministry, by that I mean you're just serving people, loving people, doing whatever it is that God has said to do, to reach people for Jesus. Uh, and it starts with compassion. And you have to start looking around differently. You have to look at what's there. I, I've noticed that, and I, I taught a, a course here on mission, uh, thinking like a missionary. And it starts with, Looking at the people differently. Because when you live in a community, you get used to it. And it kind of bugs you. And, and we become more judgy than outreachy. <laughs> That's, is that a word, outreachy? You know, you guys understood what I meant. You know, we do more judging than reaching out. We do more, we, we don't see the people. And I always, I always will tell this story. Give me a group of Christians, put them in a plane or a van or something, and send them just across some border to another town. They are like different people. They get up, oh, these people are so needy. These people need Jesus. And I want to say that they're actually better off than your neighbors. Anyways, that's a different story. But my point being that they are now suddenly, they've taken their, these are my neighborhood, this is my community, and they've taken it off. And now everything is an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. Where they live becomes strategic. Where they work becomes strategic. Because they're looking with compassion. They're looking with compassion. It cannot be said enough, even how many times Jesus is to- said that he had compassion on them. He had compassion. He had compassion. That, that, so it starts with you want to have compassion. And then when you, you begin to be drawn to a, person, a certain need or a certain people, that's usually what happens is, is out of this compassion, you, you feel like, I want to do something. And it may be zeroed in. I want to do something for these people, this neighborhood. I mean, all across the world, there are people, we call them missionaries or pastors or leaders, that are, that are mobilizing to reach a specific people. That's very common with the Lord. So He may call you to reach a people. He may call you to re- meet a need in a, in the, in a culture. He may, this, who knows what He'll call you to do? He, it may be preaching. It may be serving. They're both powerful. But it will start with compassion. And that's when you need to start listening 
to the Holy Spirit. Well, obviously, you should be sooner than that, but it's a good time right then. When you're feeling the compassion, turn your Holy Spirit reader on. Don't just look, but feel inside. What is God beginning to stir? What crazy idea <laughs> is coming to your head? What's coming into your heart? And it's, it may start like, things like this. Well, boy, somebody's got to do something about this. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> oh, man, we, that, that can't be like that. We, that. That can't be right. Boy, those, those people need to hear about Jesus. What do you mean they, no one's... Ca- ca- and you begin to have this compassion that begins to focus And then suddenly the Holy Spirit begins to inspire you. He inspires you. That's my word for being led. He's inspiring you. And so now you've done step, you've got like you're two steps in. Watch for the next one because God will begin to give you instructions. And that will require that you believe enough to obey. You believe enough to obey. I, I got to tell you this little story. I probably told it to the class, but it's, 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 it, it's an example just from my life because I'm one of those timid evangelists. I'm one of those, I was a missionary for most of my young adult life, but I was always kind of timid about it. I always wish someone else would go. Uh, I'll drive the car, you go. But my dad sent us a group of young men out as a team. And this is one of our first forays on our own without my dad there to guide us. And he said, I want you to go. I want you to pray about where you're going to go. And I want you to share Jesus with people and get us a meeting place there. Okay. So me and my friends got together. What should we do? Where should we go? So we, we thought of a rancho that we wanted to go to. So we got in our truck, and my dad's truck actually, and drove over there. And we <laughs> arrive at this little village. None of us know what we're going to do. We had just been told by my dad, and then the Holy Spirit confirmed it, that we should go to that little, little ranchito. And if you're not familiar with ranchitos, they're usually a cluster of four, five, six, or more houses where all the farmers live together. And <clears throat> we're like praying all the way, oh, God, open a door, open a door for us. Lord, how are we going to reach these people? And we come around this little narrow road into the rancho, and there in the street is a young man having a seizure. And we stopped. I, can, I remember very vividly us stopping in the dust, kind of coming, and we all got quiet. And what should we do? <laughs> what should we do? We're like the missionaries. Isn't that funny that we would ask, what, 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 what should we do? And, the, and all the young guys were looking at me like I would know. What, what should we do, Richard? <laughs> and, and I can't come up with anything. The obvious is we've got to get out and pray for this guy. At least move him off the road. But we're, st- <laughs> we're stuck there. And, and finally, one of them says, well, I know what your dad would do. He'd get out of the car and pray for this guy. And I go, yeah, that's probably what we should do. So we get out, and he's still, mind you, this is still going on while we're in the car debating. And we come out, and here's this poor young guy, and we just laid our hands, and we prayed, Jesus, help this young boy, you know, in the prayer that we prayed, mighty, mighty prayer of faith, prayer of faith, you know. It's like, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And... Uh, Almost as soon as we started praying, his seizure passed. He was just laying still, looked up his eyes. And right about that time, a lady comes to the door, and that's her boy. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, she thinks I hit the kid, you know. (laughs) But uh, she didn't. She says, oh, my gosh. And what happened? I said, well, we found him in a seizure, and we prayed for him. and He seems to be okay now. And she looks at him, and he gets up and talks to her. And apparently, he would have these seizures, but it would, he would stay like in a stupor for days. And the fact that he was not only stopped, but he came up and was, that, that's how God did the miracle. So we came back and had church and got people saved, and it was an awesome se- season of ministry. But it was just a, a few dumb kids trying to obey in faith. And realizing that we do very little, God does all the rest. So you have to believe and obey because faith is evident, made evident, because you act, you step into it, 
you do that thing. Maybe the first thing is that God tells you to start praying for them. So you start praying for them. Maybe he says, go meet some of them, and you go meet some of them. Maybe he says, do this or do that, bake a cake or whatever. And it could be more complicated than that. Organize this and rent that facility, whatever. But there's always compassion, direction, obedience. Be up to date with the latest sermons and listen to Stone Point Community's podcast. It's also a quick and easy way to share these messages with your friends and family. Stay inspired throughout your week and listen. And then, watch God work for you. Just be on the lookout. Watch God work for you. Let God work for you. When we planted our church, I had no idea how to plant a church. I'm not sure that anybody really does, but I certainly did not. And I just, we, and I just had to obey God. What do you say to do? He said, well, don't worry about it. And it, I kid you not, people would just show up. I don't know where they came from. I would, you know, I, uh, here's an incident. I'm, I'm driving in this little town in Sierra Vista. Anybody know Sierra Vista? Okay, we were in Sierra Vista 100 years ago. Uh, and um, I, I, I'm driving down, I want, and, and I'm going by a car lot. And the Lord says, go in there. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, you're going to give me a car. No. Uh, but go in there and talk to this guy that's going to come out. Out comes an older gentleman. And he says, oh, here, you're looking for a car. I says, no, I'm not. I'm here to talk to you. I says, what? I says, yeah, I was praying. And the Lord said, pull in and talk to you. And he looks at me, and his heart opened up. And man, he, he became a really sweet part of our church. See, God, when we say God's at work, we don't just mean that he will work when you're involved. We mean that God is involved in all of it. In fact, he sets you up. He orchestrates. He calls people from a different place. God is just phenomenal what he can do. And boy, you just start watching what God does. And you just begin to walk on it and say, oh, look what, oh my gosh, look what God's doing that. You know, I always used to laugh when I was finding a church because I'd introduce myself as a, a church guy and people would start apologizing for not coming to my church. Well, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I already have a church, you know. I go, I wasn't asking you. And I, but I realized, I believe there's just like an anointing of the Lord, kind of a drawing anointing. This is good. I mean, us. Now, here's the last one. And you need to include others in your miracle. Don't. Don't just take this message and make it an individual thing. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, God's going to do this miracle for me. Absolutely, you can apply it personally. And some of you are listening to this and God's talking to you about something very personal. But the theme of this verse is ministry as a team. Ministry together. Jesus didn't just feed the, disciple, the, the people himself. He could have just said, guys, sit down. I'm going to feed these people. And he would have fed them. But he said to them, you go feed them. And then not only that, it's impossible for you to feed them all. Give the people some of the food and let them feed each other. That's church. I'll give you some bread and some fish. (laughs) You feed, and then you turn around and feed someone else. So we need to start thinking, not only, Lord, what do you want me to do, but you might want to add, and who should I do this with? What do you want me to do, and who do you want me to do this with? Who, who could be a part of this with me? Who should I invite? Who should I share this vision? And maybe they'll join with me in this wonderful, wonderful time. So my heart for you is that as you continue to do the awesome thing you're doing as a church, and I, I have a, a, I'm fully aware that I'm, I'm talking to a faith people, and to a pastor who are pastored by men and women of great vision and ministry. But I, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to add the, the uncle part of it, the grandpa. I'm old enough to be some of your people's grandpa. So just whatever, just as an older man in Jesus to say to you, don't limit God. Don't evaluate what he's telling you by your resources. 
Don't limit what God wants you to do by what you think you can do. And don't just discard those inspirations that the Holy Spirit gives you. Don't just put them off. Because God's a God of... God. By the way, I believe God's a God of good ideas. And He never is tired of good ideas. He, he can be a little bit like that annoying friend who's always up. Does anybody have an always up friend? Oh my gosh. You know, hey, what are we going to do? What? Oh, you know, well, let's go do this. Let's go do that. And I go... I was just going to lay on my couch. But they have, a, it's always a great idea. And that's how God is. You'll come to him just exhausted from the last idea. We just got into the building. We just worked our tails off here. And now he's saying this. Because, well, God doesn't get tired. And he loves his ideas. Because in his mind, there is no idea he can't accomplish. And whether he has to do it through you or me, it doesn't bother him. I've said, Lord, why are you choosing me? Count yourself lucky, Richard. <laughs> and it wasn't because of your good looks. And it wasn't because you're so smart. In fact, those qualities may have been the reasons I picked you. It's because you're not that smart, and you're not that great, and you're just every day. Come on! That's what the scripture says. He looks for the weakest thing, the lowest thing, the, the smallest thing. Uh, does it say the dumbest thing? I don't know if it does, but... You know, it's funny because... Never mind, I won't go there. Let's leave that alone. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, now here's, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually getting really close to closing here. Matthew 17 in the Message Bible. Because you're not taking God seriously, said Jesus, the simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, a poppy seed, say, you would tell this mountain, move, and it would move. There's nothing you wouldn't be able to tackle. That a great translation? And that's where I got the poppy seed from. It was from the Message Bible. He must have known something I didn't know. But I just want, I wanted to leave that with you, that you're not taking it. Now, this is actually in response when they couldn't heal somebody and that wouldn't, a demon wouldn't come out or something like that. And he goes, well, it's because you're not taking God's people serious. I think in the, uh, most translations, it says you didn't have enough faith. But uh, what an interesting insight to what, Unbelief is, you're not taking God seriously. Take him seriously. Know who he is. Know what it means. When he inspires you, remember who's inspiring you. Take him seriously. Write it down, think about it, yes. Pray about it, yes. Ask some other people, yes. But take it seriously. Because God may want you to be the catalyst that feeds thousands. That meets a need that hasn't been met. That goes to a place that hasn't been gone to. That shares the word in a way that no one else can do it but you. And reaches people that no one else can reach but you. That's the promise of the Lord. Let's pray together. <clears throat> as, as I close this, I just I want to leave this with this concept. Let God speak to you. Let him communicate his heart to you. And in fact, I just wonder if, if some of you would be bold enough to say, this message was for me. I needed to hear this today because God is speaking some things to me. Wow, there's a lot. Hey, like the Holy Spirit knew. <laughs> Lord, I, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are at that stage. Lord, some are just getting something. And others, there's been something mulling in their spirit. There's been something for And some are just being overwhelmed by doors that are already starting to open. But Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for that 
poppy seed faith. That is just simply obedience. Lord, we can have faith and be nervous. <laughs> we can even have faith and be scared. But what counts is do we obey? And thank you, Lord, that there's a people here that want to obey you. They want to step out in faith. Lord, I just pray and confirm in Jesus' name that there would be a release of the Holy Spirit in demonstration, in confirmation, that miracles would begin to be evident. The miracles of open doors, of connections with people, of creativity, of, of strategies, and Lord, and of course the miracles of transformed lives. And that this congregation would be a catalyst for so many innovative and creative ways to reach this community for Jesus. Lord, this is a place of, uh, it's, it's like the headquarters of innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship. So Lord, there's an anointing on this church to feed thousands, to be that voice that, that breaks new barriers, that steps to new places. And so Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name over them that there'd be this wonderful grace of the Lord that you would look into kind of change metaphors that they would be like David's mighty army. They were broken and they were in debt and they, they were rejected, but they came together under Jesus and now they're ready to take the enemy on. They're ready to do exploits in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's just raise our hands and just worship in the Spirit. Just talk to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the joy of working with you. <laughs> that we get to work with you. That we get to partner with you. We just give you praise and thanksgiving for it. Everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's message. I hope you'll subscribe so you can receive the latest podcast to keep encouraged and inspired all through the week. Help us to continue to share the message of hope with those all around the world. Visit scc.church or click the link in the description to partner with us today. We hope you share this message with a friend and be sure to follow us on social media. We're praying for you. I know God's best is still ahead. We will see you next time.